Welcome to Biblical Christian Content, where we like to keep the content biblical. Let's go. Can you imagine the church where you serve at? If all the people in that body walked in with this character. I have to petition everyone that's watching this video. If you desire to help me reach more people with biblical truth, then do me a favor. At minimum, hit the like and hit the subscribe to generate more push to get biblical Christian content to more hearts, more minds, and more souls. Thank you. Enjoy the video. Of the Apostle Paul in Acts 20, 19. It says there that he served the Lord with all humility and tears. It marked his leadership. Paul to the church at Colossae in 3.12 said, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, get put on a compassionate heart, kindness, and then he mentions humility and meekness and patience. This is a significant word. And for the church to be in unity, you've got to have people in there who think not more highly of himself, but walk in that. Can you imagine the church where you serve at? If all the people in that body walked in with this character, walked in with a lonely mind. Can you imagine what your home would look like if you walked in even with your wife, if you're married and with your children, and rather than being the prima donna, you're, you realized, hey, my home begins with this heart and this attitude. Do you remember when uh, the apostle Peter said in 1 Peter 5.5, 5, you who are younger, be subject to your elders and clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. You don't have a high opinion of yourself. You have a low opinion, a low estimation. You're stunned, as our brother said, by the grace of God, and you're energized by, this, by the power that the Lord supplies. And so here, God, it says in Peter 5.5, 5, opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the what? To the humble. I'll tell you this, when you're picking fellow elders, training fellow elders, make this the first prerequisite of the guy's life. Because I'll tell you, one of the greatest dangers in picking an elder is to have an elder not be gentle or have an elder be self-willed. And so the only way you're gonna work in a leadership team together is 1 Timothy 3 says that the elder must be humble or he uses the word gentle. Don't forget that pride was the first sin committed by Lucifer and at the heart of division, at the heart of discord and church splits, you're gonna say is wrong doctrine, maybe, could be but I'm gonna say at the heart of most church splits is pride and disunity, a failure to esteem other people in your midst and to listen. So Paul says God's glorified when the church is unified and the character of unity starts with a humble spirit, a low estimate of oneself, esteeming others as more important than himself. Imagine the context in which Paul wrote this. I'm smiling. Think of the Jew-Gentile barrier in chapter two. Think of the hatred. Think of the hostility, if you will. Think of the anger. And Paul begins this character of a worthy walk with all humility. The ideal is with total humility. Think lowly. Man, let me just ask, is that the thing you prize in your own heart? Is that the thing that you prize in the people that you minister to? Is that the way you walk into a room? We have to be very careful that we don't ever become entitled. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Biblical Christian content. Um, I don't think people understand how important this uh, message is, how important the meaning of this video is. And I just want to drive it home. Uh, the clip previous to this was Phil Johnson. And he discussed worldliness in the church, which is an absolute sin, catering to the needs of the unregenerate, catering to the needs of the lost instead of catering to the desires of God and living to please him, and especially in the context of a church. When you're looking for leadership in a church, that's why this video is so important. And I can speak from my own personal um, situations that I've been in. 
And in the video with Phil Johnson, I reference that I came out of a church that acquired new leadership when the former head pastor uh, had moved on to take on a different role in life. And I want you to see here, he uses a couple of key terms such as uh, you do not want leadership that is self-willed. They are driven by their own desires and their own motives. Not only that, I can speak from experience. The people who are in leadership like this, they surround themselves with a, with a bunch of yes men. They form their own little clique. And often those are the people who appoint their salary, uh, who make decisions um, in the church. So eldership in general, but I'm talking eldership in general, from the pastor all the way down, whatever lead roles or key roles there are in a local church and congregation in order to maintain order, they should 100% not be self-willed. They should be humble. As this gentleman referenced, um, Paul said he, he cried tears on behalf of the people in which he was uh, ministering to. Now, d does your leadership look like that? Does your leadership love you? Are they self-willed, hard-headed, and unresponsive? In my video with Phil Johnson, I even referenced um, that many people from my church left. You had, you had men and families that were Bible-loving, godly, Christ-like people who were turned off by the style, the changes, and the direction you were trying to take the church. And it wasn't just a matter of preferences. It was a matter of integrity to, to please the Lord, number one. And number two, when you're unwilling to hear what the godly, God surrounds you with godly people in a congregation, and you're so self-driven that you don't even, you, the, every critique, every suggestion falls on deaf ears and you run, you, you, you want to, you know, you want to drive the car in the direction you want to go only, and then you surround your people yourself with people who will um, okay that and and allow you to press on, and you remove people. There's been people that were removed and forced to step down, or because they wouldn't see eye to eye, and it kind of wasn't tolerated. That is disgusting. Think about the. I don't want to judge anyone's pride or heart, but if that's the case. God hates pride, and you're operating in pride. So as far as my other church is concerned, I pray that they would repent. I pray leadership would repent. They really need, they really, I don't even think it dawns on them that they need to examine themselves. But again, I guess that's how deceptive pride can be. I pray that I would maintain a heart of humility. I pray that I would examine myself. I pray that I would walk worthy of whatever calling God has in my life. Um in the church and outside of the church gathering. And, and that's that. I just, this is the heart. This is the heart that every leader should have in the church, not just the pastor, but other leaders as well. You should have a love for the people, love for the flock of Christ, love for the word of God, and love to honor God in all decisions that you make. We're not perfect, but to be, as he said, self-driven and also unwilling to listen that is scary especially when it's coming from well-meaning christ-centered scripture scripturally grounded individuals in your church that want the best for you and the people in the church so like share comment subscribe stay tuned more biblical christian content god bless